Welcome back to Catfish, the untold stories. On this evening's program, you will be subjected to tales right. of the strange and uncanny. All right, another one. My name's Megan, I'm 20, almost 21, and I'm from Central Florida. Well, at what age do you stop saying you're almost the next age? I think after 30. Probably like 28, you're like, eh. I was catfished for just over two years. Back in 2008, I was the nerdy kid in school. I didn't have a lot of close friends. That girl really looks like her. What was that for? What, do you mean, what was that for? I was bullied, and I remember some girl wanted to fight me because I kept missing the ball. Let's call mommy. Is mommy gonna come and get you? Huh? Get away from me! Huh? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, huh? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Whoa. <laughs> My mom and I didn't really get along during this time. I said I'm fine, just leave I me alone. I just want to make sure you're okay. You seem upset. I was just going through a lot of changes, trying to figure out who I was while dealing with the people at school. I'm, I'm just worried about you. You don't need to worry about me. Megan. I was also depressed. I took it out on her a lot. Just leave me alone. My name is Rose. I'm from Georgia, and I am 19. Cute. Rose from Georgia. She's Georgia Rose. I started catfishing and it lasted two years. I did not feel comfortable in my own skin. I felt like this is not the person that I'm supposed to be. I felt like I might be gay. I just looked at a girl and I was like, they're so beautiful, you know, they look so soft. <laughs> oh, why do I have to date a boy? That's how I feel. I couldn't agree more. But my folks were very conservative. I was raised Roman Catholic. That religion does not always accept homosexuals. I was on a social network and I saw all these people that were popular because of their appearance. And that is why I wanted to use someone else's pictures to catfish and talk to those people and just be popular, I guess. We all think when we're in high school that being popular is what matters, and that we want to be being the hot. Good looking. But then you grow up, and you realize that that's not what's important. I made the catfish profile. I liked the name Tyler. He had poopy hair. He looked really good. Definitely didn't look like how I looked, but that's the way I wanted to look. I get it. She's going to go online and pretend to be a guy. guy. I said he lived in Southern California, because I always thought it would be cool to live there. He's totally your type. He's really cute. When I saw Tyler's profile page, his picture was this guy with the shaggy hair. This guy has some dreamy eyes. Yeah, I, have, I could fall in love with those eyes. Emerald green. Maybe he's like too cute though. Please, add him now. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. I immediately got butterflies because I hadn't had a boyfriend at all. I hadn't had any experience with guys, and this was like the first guy I thought was really attractive. Megan was really beautiful. She had red, flippy hair. She wore really good makeup. <laughs> she had a lot of the same interests that I had. I felt like me and her were gonna be like good friends. I hope this story has a happy ending. We would talk pretty much every day because he was someone I felt like I could lean on. We were always friends the entire time. I had a crush on him, but I never really admitted it because he had a girlfriend. I wasn't necessarily trying to be intimate with someone. I was mostly looking for friendships. And that's kind of sweet. Seems harmless. What's the worst that could happen? What could possibly go wrong? I asked to send me a photo of him holding up a sign with my name on it. That was the thing people did. They just wrote the, their friend's name on a piece of paper and took a photo with it. I wanted to show off the fact that we were really good friends. Good move. It's one of a few steps you should take. I was just like, oh gosh, what am I supposed to do? I found a picture of Pippi Hair holding a card. And I just edited it to make it look as real as possible to send to her. He happened to have a picture online of him holding up a piece of paper. He was holding it up too square. Too flat. Hold it up right. with some crinkle, because it's almost impossible to superimpose right. something onto that and make it look real. When he sent me the photo, I don't even know like how to explain how that made me feel. I was just excited. I was so proud of it. I started developing 
feelings for her. Like, I already thought she was attractive. So I said that Tyler's best friend was named Jake. I used the Jake profile to get my feelings towards Megan out. Oh, man, she's so doubling down. Now she's got a second fake profile. So now she's using best friend. Jake to kind of be there to right. extract all the feelings from Megan. This is where things always take a turn for the worse. When I saw Jake's profile, I thought he was cute, but my main focus was on Tyler at the time. I could just talk to him and not worry about anything. Tyler told me that he was gonna come to downtown Orlando for a vacation with his girlfriend and Jake, and um, I found out we were actually gonna be in the same area on the same day because I was going to a concert. I'm so excited. This band is so good. Have I you heard them? Of course I have. So my friend and I were standing outside this club in downtown Orlando waiting to get in. Do you see those guys? Yeah. I think that's Tyler and Jake. No way! Wait a second. What? They're gonna meet the real guy? Hold on, time out. What? Welcome back to Catfish, the untold stories. They're gonna meet the real guy? I think that's Tyler and Jake. And he looks a lot like them. Go over there. No, are you crazy? What if it's not them? Well, go find out. I'll go with you. Come on. No, 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 no. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> Seriously? You're such a baby. Grow up here. We're gonna go. Like, it's fate. They're there. Come on. I noticed that they were staring right back at me, but going from I aming to just, hey, I'm here in person now, it was really kind of a terrifying thought. And so I never went up to them. What? Are you kidding? She's at this concert and sees the guys and doesn't talk to them? This girl needs to grow a pair, like her friend said. So I got home that night and I messaged Tyler and asked him if that was them by the pole. And he said, yeah. So I asked him, you know, then what was I wearing? He got it right. It was just completely coincidental. It was just like my luck. I guessed the correct color. She just guessed the color? Rose might have a skill beyond catfishing. Mom, you have nothing to worry about. You have not even seen his face. He's my best friend. Oh my god, Megan, this is the internet. It could be anybody. Boom! Truth bomb. He's a high school boy from California. That's what you think. That's not necessarily the truth. Oh! <laughs> Could be anybody. High five, Mom! Christmas was approaching, and Tyler told me that he was going to visit his aunt that lived in Orlando. Mom, he's coming to visit. Mom, it's great news. I said, sure, that's, that's fine. But I still had that really ramped up nervous feeling. The week before he was supposed to come, he went to the doctors with his mom just for a checkup. And I was texting him the whole time he was in the doctor's office. Let me guess, he's got cancer. The doctor told him he had bone cancer. There it is! Cancer is eating away at these catfish. It is an epidemic of massive proportions. Oh my God. He was basically just telling me that he was, like how scared he was because they told him that it spread to his brain. What is Rose doing? She's losing control. They said, you know, we're gonna have to operate to try to remove the tumor. So he wasn't gonna be able to come down because he had surgery. I ended up messaging Jake, asking, you know, how he was, if you've heard anything. And Jake actually told me that he passed away on the operating table. I'm wearing black because I knew people were going to be dying. <sighs> R.I.P. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. Pray for, what was his name? Tyler. Tyler. Welcome back to Catfish, the untold stories. <laughs> After I found out that Tyler passed away, I just didn't want to come out of the bathroom. I was just upset. 
can open the door. Oh, please leave me alone. I can help you. Please let me help you, Megan. I had a daughter that was already dealing with depression, and now she was going to have to deal with this death. <laughs> After a few days of not talking to her, the feelings inside were like, I want to talk to her really bad, comfort her to get closer to her. So that's why I started using the Jake profile. So now Jake is going to swoop in. I mean, we're no better off with Jake as we were with Tyler. Now Megan's going to fall in love with Jake. And then she's going to kill right. him off too? Jake's relationship, I noticed, evolved very quickly after Tyler's death to more of a boyfriend rather than just a best friend. I started to develop really strong feelings for her. I was texting Jake and I wanted to talk to him and hear his voice, so I just tell him like, hey, can you talk on the phone for a minute? All right, they've never talked on the phone. I was just really nervous. I didn't really know what to do. I just didn't want to lose her. So I called him. Hi. Who's this? I didn't know like what I was supposed to do, so I pretended to be someone else. Uh, actually, this is Jake's sister. But just a second, he has a surprise for you. I used a video, and I just put the phone up to it, and it was a guy playing guitar. How on earth could I While I was listening to Jake play, I don't know, I felt like I was being serenaded by a boyfriend. We watch the sun come up, and I wish you were by my side. Girls are really gullible. Wow. Megan lived in Florida. I had this idea to go to the University of Miami and to move to Florida for her. Mom, Jake wants to know if you'll let me meet him for the day in Miami. Alone? Not a chance. What if he comes here? Under the conditions that I can meet him. Oh my god, OK, yeah, yeah. Now she was back to cloud nine. I love you. I do not see this ending well. You better buckle up, Max, because this ride is about to get real. Just a few hours before we had to leave, I just knew that something was wrong. I was kind of like panicking on what I should do, and should I just be honest, or should I just lie like I did before? What? My sister responded at the very last minute and said, hey, Jake overdosed last night. Is he at the hospital? What's happening? And now he's in a medically induced coma. What? Oh, Come God. on. Rose, you got to stop. Not cool. You're killing us. Megan wanted to see Jake and to come to LA because he was in the hospital. And I said, no, and she just kept insisting. So I was just like, well, he's not alive anymore. That was hard because I just didn't understand. And at that point, I still believed that these were real people and that I just had terrible luck. The moment I heard those words, I thought, this is bullshit. Mama Bear, throw it down. Come on it out. Come on, Mom. Some BS. I was enraged. I called local law enforcement, FBI. Yes, I'm looking for someone to investigate two people that contacted my teenage daughter online. I was a mom on a mission. No, she has no idea who they are. That's what we need to find out. I got advice from a detective that said your best option is hire a private investigator, which is what I did. Mom is getting real. She hired a private PI. She she hired a PI. You know what we call that? The mom squad. The private investigator's report gave me definitive evidence that in LA County, there was no death for Tyler. Didn't get lucky with a coincidence on that one. Mm -hmm. In the final summary of the report, they identified through the phone records definitively that the same person was both Tyler as well as Jake. I'm so sorry. When I told her, it was almost a stunned disbelief. I felt confusion, and I was just angry. I ended up texting Jake. Who are you? We hired a private investigator. 
I know that you've been lying about where you live. You're not dead. You need to come clean. After I confronted him about it, he didn't admit to any of it, and he basically just showed no remorse. Not very long after the investigation, I see that the Tyler and the Jake account are both reactivated, and I see Tyler talking to this girl, Ivy. She just brought him back? Rose. Rose, really Rose is just, sloppy. Yeah. Rose is no respect for the dead. I took it upon myself to message Ivy and warn her. A few months had gone by, and I get a message from Ivy, and she said, hey, you were right the whole time. They weren't who they said they were. Um, the person who did it, its name is actually Rose. She just made it worse every time. A rose is a rose is a rose. I was catfishing another girl named Ivy, and I confessed to her because I wanted someone to talk to. I deleted the Tyler profile, the Jake profile. I deleted everything off my computer. I was just like hid from the world. I was just nervous that something was gonna happen, like bad to me for what I did, karma. I realized the psychological damage that I did to someone and it does not make me feel good about myself because that's not the person that I am. I'm really sorry for what I did. I really loved her and that it was like real. I hope she will one day understand why I did it and just not be mad and just let go of everything. If you or someone you know is struggling emotionally, head to halfofus.com for ways to get help and feel better.